Okay, so this is one of my favorite calculations. There's several really nice calculations in this class. I think this is one of the best one. And this is the calculation that's taking up the um, the bottom of page 58 and all of page 59 in the text. I'm going to run through that calculation again. So the title of this is the maximum likelihood estimator for variance is biased, and we're going to give a proof of that. We saw that in an example in the previous video and I just want to remind you that the maximum likelihood estimator for variance is a sample variance or excuse me it's the um, variance of a data set as actually the sample variance will refer to as something else it's 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared and that's a very natural way to represent variance because for a um, for a random variable, sigma squared is the expectation of x minus mu squared, you might recall. So it makes sense. You're averaging. You're adding up nine of these values minus the mean squareds and then dividing by how many there are. So this is really the most intuitive way to estimate variance, but it just turns out to be an underestimate overall. Um, it usually underestimates and on average it's going to underestimate the variance. <laughs> we're going to show that and the way we're going to show that is by taking an expectation. So if I think of this s squared as a random variable, right, because it's it's derived from these n random variables xi and x bar is just the average of those n random variables. Well then that's the expectation of 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. Okay. Now I'm going to pull the 1 over n out and then I'm going to distribute out what's inside here. And actually I'm going to need a little bit more space so let me move that over. That is 1 over n times the expectation of and then I have the sum from i equals 1 to n, and I'll take xi squared minus 2 xi x bar plus x bar squared. Okay, so I'm summing up this whole thing. Well, instead, I can think of that as summing one term at a time. So let me do that. It's 1 over n times the expectation. And I'm just going to stop writing these subscripts and superscripts to the summation sign. But understand that I am summing from i equals 1 to n. Okay, minus 2 times the sum of xi x bar plus the sum of x bar squared. Okay, now remember that x bar is the sum of the xi's divided by n. Okay, so I have 1 over n times the expected value of, and we have the sum of the xi squareds, and then minus 2. Now, sum of xi's is x bar times n. So I have x bar times n times x bar plus this does not change when i changes. If i goes from 1 to 2, x bar stays the same. It's the average of all those x's. So when I add up not, or when I add up n of these, I'm just multiplying n by x bar squared. So we'll have n times x bar squared. Let me scroll down here. And this is 1 over n times the expected value of the sum of the xi squareds. And now notice I have minus 2 in x bar squared, and then I have a plus in x bar squared. So those are those two terms are going to combine. It's going to be give me minus in x bar squared. Okay, now I'm going to distribute out this expectation and I'm going to reverse the order of the sum and the expectation. That's linearity of expectation. Remember that linearity of expectation is that if we had the expectation of a sum here, we could distribute it out to the individual terms. Well, that works inside of a summation that's denoted by sigma like this too. So I have 1 over n times the sum 
of the expectation. Now each of these x xi's is a copy of some random variable. Okay, we're making n observations, and i is the xi is the ith observation, and this random variable x is the one that's representing all those. So we have the expectation of x squared. Okay, minus 1 over n times n cancel, and we just get x bar squared. Excuse me, the expectation of x bar squared. Okay, well again, notice that this expectation of x squared does not depend on the subscript i. So when I add these up, I'm just adding up n identical terms, and there's n of them. So this will be n times the expectation of x squared for that sum, but then we're multiplied by 1 over n. So we just have the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x bar squared. Okay, and that, what is that? I dropped my left side. That's the expectation of our maximum likelihood estimator for the variance. Okay, now I'm going to pull up homework three. You proved something in homework three that's very important. So I want to remind you about that. You've probably tried to forget about homework three. I think that was the hardest homework for most people, but a few people actually found it to be the easiest because they're used to the proof classes. There's a lot of proofs in here. And for he, for this um, for this example, we're going to use this. We're going to use that the variance is equal to the expectation of the squared random variable minus the mean squared. So remember expectation of x is mu. So I can rewrite this as sigma squared is the expectation of x squared minus mu squared. Okay, so well, first of all let me box this in. We'll be using that. And then also I'm going to solve for expectation of x squared here. Um, I'm just going to flip the sides and then add the mu squared over and we get sigma squared plus mu squared. So we will use that. We will plug that in for the expectation of x squared here. And then I can also think of x bar as a random variable. Okay, x bar is you take n observations of the random variable x and then average them together. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same kind of thing with x bar. The variance of the sample mean is the expectation of the sample mean squared minus the expectation of the sample mean squared. You have to see it written down to see the difference between those two things I said there. The difference is which order and am, am I squaring and taking the expectation in. Now we also know that if we have n random variables, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus yada 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 plus xn, and those random variables are independent, and they share the same distribution, same distribution as x, that if I add those together then the variance of the sum is just the sum of the variances. That for example was in Theorem 3.2.9 for continuous random variables, and then it was somewhere else in the book for discrete random variables. So this is n times the variance of x. Okay. So if I take the variance of x1, x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn and I'm averaging so I divide by n well then it's like I'm multiplying by a constant 1 over n and theorem 3.2.9 says that if we multiply by a constant then what happens to the variance well we actually end up multiplying that variance by the constant squared and the reason for that is is because the variance is the expectation of x minus mu squared and if you multiply x and mu by a constant right if you multiply a random variable by a constant then you multiply the expectation by a constant that constant gets squared and then it can be brought out so by dividing by n for the random variable we actually end up dividing by n squared on the variance and this is the variance of the random variable x divided by n Okay, so that is
sigma squared sum x bar, right? Because sigma squared just means variance, and then this is x bar, the average of the n random variables. So I'm going to plug this in to this formula here, and I get, let's see, sigma sub x squared over n equals the expectation of x bar squared minus the expectation of x bar squared. Okay, now, this is the expectation of the average of n independent and identically distributed random variables. So they all have the same distribution as x. If you average them, the mean, the expectation, is still going to be the expectation of x. So this guy is just the expectation of x, which we've been denoting by mu. What that means is that the expectation of x bar squared is sigma sub x squared divided by n plus mu squared, right? Because that mu squared gets added over the other side. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy and that guy and plug them into here. So I have the expectation of s squared equals, well, let's see. We had the expectation of x squared, which is sigma squared plus mu squared. I'm going to drop the subscript of x there. And then I subtract the expectation of x bar squared, which I know is sigma squared over n plus mu squared. And I get that the expectation of s squared is equal to, let's see, if I have sigma squared and I subtract 1 nth of sigma squared, that leaves me with m minus 1 over n sigma squared. Okay. And indeed, this guy right here is biased because the expectation does not equal what it's trying to estimate. Okay, it's underestimating it. Now, if n is large, that's close to 1, but it's still going to be less than 1. Okay, so we have that this maximum likelihood estimator for the variance actually ends up, on average, underestimating the variance. We saw that in an example. Now we've seen it in a proof. But we've gotten a little bit more in the proof than just the fact that these two aren't equal. We know how how they're not equal. We know that this is off by a factor of m minus 1 over n. So we're going to redefine s squared is now going to be defined as not 1 over n but 1 over n minus 1 times the sum as i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. Okay. Now what does that do for us? Now our expectation of the s new s squared excuse me is going to be the expectation of the old s squared, but notice that we've taken away the n and divided by m minus one. So essentially we've taken, let's see, let's go up to the very top here. We've taken this formula and we've multiplied by n over n minus 1. And then the n's cancel and you're left with that n minus 1 on the bottom. So we've multiplied by n over n minus 1. That means when we take the expectation, linearity says we can bring that constant out and I have n over n minus 1 times the expectation of the old s squared which is m minus 1 over n times sigma squared, and indeed that's sigma squared. Okay. All right, now this is confusing. And what I'm, there's probably lots of things in this video that are confusing. What I'm specifically referring to is the fact that this s squared, I'm denoting as two different things. Well, unfortunately, that is standard. Um, if you see s squared, you just have to read from the context what you're talking about. In this course,
um, unless otherwise stated from this point forward right in the rest of the sections of this course if I refer to s squared this is what I mean I mean the unbiased sample variance and that's what this is referred to as the unbiased sample variance now the funny thing is that um, if I take the square root then that's my sample standard deviation but it's biased again and you'll see that in the lab and maybe I'll do that in the next example point that out so this this guy is unbiased the variance so sample variance is unbiased now now that we've changed this to 1 over m minus 1 but as soon as you take the square root it ends up being at the sample standard deviation has a bias in it okay and unfortunately that's just the way it is there isn't a general formula out there for an unbiased standard deviation for particular examples if you know that your x uh, your random variable x is normal for example there is a way to come up with an unbiased sample standard deviation but there's not a general approach like there is for the variance so even though this happens to be biased this is the most common way to estimate standard deviation of a population based on a sample okay so there's a derivation of um, the fact that the maximum likelihood estimator for variance is biased and as a bonus we got a way to fix it and the way to fix it is to take the unbiased sample variance which means I divide by m minus 1 rather than n